first time. I'm not entirely sure what it is exactly that I'm doing here. But Amber's got something going on, Amber Case. Say hello to the ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. She's, as always, got something going on. And uh, I, I guess the, the, the point is that she thought it might be better if she wasn't the only one that knew about it. Yeah, generally, I've been doing a lot of projects that I can't tell anybody about. Signed a lot of NDAs, mm -hmm. done a lot of flying around random places. And I feel like I don't really yeah. have Fix your color there, much sorry. to show. So. I was emailed recently by somebody and they said that they have this device and that... Wait, wait. Okay, so let's do the whole... Amber's a cyborg anthropologist. <laughs> let's start with that. If you don't know Amber already, she's a cyborg anthropologist. And if you don't know what that is, you just need to go Google Amber Case or Case Organic to figure it out because... All right, now go. Okay, so I, I study human-computer interaction. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of work with that. So I got this email from somebody who knew my work and they said, we. You know, we have this device that we've mm. been installed on a number of people, and we would like you to beta test the device. It's a device that they're installing in a number of people. Installing or a have number installed. Of, yeah. So. Okay. Um, so I asked more about it, and it's two pieces of hardware: one with the motor cortex, and one with the ocular nerve. Um, it's a I don't like install an ocular nerve. It's a very. It's somewhat invasive, but since I, my ankle broke kind of recently and I went to the hospital, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I think I could probably deal with this. I think under other conditions, if this injury hadn't happened, I wouldn't be able to deal with something like so this. So if you haven't slipped and fallen in the pool south by southwest, you yeah. wouldn't be able to consider the words install and ocular? Not yet, but because there's you know a few hundred people in it and they've installed it enough, I think it's okay. Okay. So, um, so. Okay. Should be okay. You're calling it it? Um. Two pieces? What is it? Okay, it's the, the, um, the Bexus Z. <laughs> Dude, it's got like evil scientist name written all over it. We're going Star Trek world, right? Right. Okay, um, the Bexus Z. You know, the internet has a lot of words and they run out <laughs> they of them. They do. <laughs> <laughs> so they said instead of like, you know, it could be the thinker with an R uh -huh. and no E. But uh -huh. that would be really tacky. Yeah. Right? So. What does it do? I, technically, I guess it allows you to connect to the internet without a piece of hardware. So to the internet, it's not like you're connecting with other people. You also can connect to other people as long as they're on the network. As so long as they've had the ocular, the, the ocular cortex, and the motor cortex installation. So you're going to be the Borg. Technically, like yeah, resistance is futile. <laughs> right. Well, Amber. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose right. something like that. But anyway, I'm trying to figure out what this is and getting kind of debriefed on it. So. Oh, crap. When I first learned about oh, this. <laughs> Why? Why would you? I realize you're a cyborg anthropologist. You're going to let people put shit in your brain. But there's Borg in my name. It's it's okay. I get that. <laughs> you <Yeah>, ocular cortex. <laughs> right. As long as they put it in one eye, <laughs> you on drugs? Then, I could, then I could still have the other. I mean, if you think about it, right? You have wearable computers with heads-up displays, and you've got, right. you know, like the interface of the eye is already integrated with these, right? You're just sitting there, like in bed, you know, like looking at them at six I in the morning or iPhone. at like midnight, yeah. you know. It's okay. just a little bit less annoying than having to carry one of these around because it's. Surgical, that's it's less annoying. Surgically implanted in your... In so how many people have had this implant? Uh, I was told about 200 of them. So 200 people have undergone this and you're just like, okay, open up my head. Well, they're all really interesting people. Like They're like researchers and PhDs and one guy plays the theremin so I could go and hang out at his concerts and listen. Just virtually? Yeah. I mean, and they're, you know, they're... So what if you're getting laid? I'm sorry, someone has to ask. Can you shut it off? Yes. Okay. You can choose what you want to share or not. Okay. Okay. So I assume okay. it could delete or dilute the experience or not. <laughs> the thing is, Steve Mann, the, one of the guys who basically founded wearable computing, okay. um, he could turn that sort of thing off and he live broadcasts 24 7. Okay. So. So how did you find out about it? Someone approached you? Yeah, I was contacted via email, and usually like, I get some interesting emails. It might have been because of a recent article or something um, that I was in. And, uh -huh. So I kind of read through it, 
And, um, so, uh, you know, this is interesting. Maybe I'll, you know, go in and say hello. When's the procedure? Um, soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> All right, so, um, the, wow. Okay, so it's not just us today, because I'm not going to run around and ask you questions while you're getting this done. Right. That would be creepy I, for yeah, me. I, yeah. um, <laughs> if you're willing to have these implants, I'm sure you might be okay with it. But uh, you decided that this was not something you wanted to embark on on your own. Well, no. I mean, it's important to have a community when you're doing anything really different or weird. Yeah. Um, weird. Generally. Yeah. I like weird, but weird, yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of weird stuff, and if I did it alone, I would probably just go crazy. Yeah. But since there's been, like, you know, 5,000 people in my community, it's been totally okay, and I, everything is justified as some curious thing. Okay, so we've got five people. Six, if you count. Right. We've got some Skype going on. Right, we have Seven, Skype. if you count the guy behind the desk. Right. Um, and Liz. there's going to be... And we, uh, have, and we have Liz. And, uh, well, yes, who is in Los Angeles. If we count Liz, it was in Los Angeles. And one other Sorry. person who I believe is not here right. as well. But you've got a crew of documentary filmmakers that right. are going to follow you around. Mm -hmm. And we've got some of them here today. Right. Should we say hello? And yeah. Do you know all of them? Uh, not really. Okay. But we do know Amber... It, it, she's the person I knew. She she approached me a long time ago and said, "Hey, I want to do a documentary on you and cyborg anthropology." And I said, "Oh, cool." And we were throwing around ideas a lot, trying to figure out really what to do. And then when I got this email and when I, you know, went in and talked to this person about this yeah. procedure, um, I kind of just said, "Oh, that's the documentary, right?" So I contacted her, and you probably have the rest of the story. Right. And so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Cameras I'm, over here. I'm Amber DeSell, um, and I've never been on live television before, so all of a sudden, <laughs> deer in headlights. <laughs> so yeah, that's we were working on a documentary, and all of a sudden, it became much larger than Amber and I. Mm -hmm. So I started inviting people, and some of them are here today. Okay. So should we just go around the room and start with one of the mics here? Yeah. Sure, why not? Hi, one of the mics. I'm one of the mics. Introduce yourself. Hey, Clinton. Um, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. But I think it's kind of fact-finding. It's kind of exciting yeah. at the same time. Um, I guess I had a question for you. OK, go ahead. Um, what What's the time frame in this going to be like? How long do you expect this procedure to take? Oh, um, I was told that it will take about an hour and that I should be okay after the anesthesia wears off. An hour for brain surgery. With about an hour later. And it's not that bad. It's, it's yeah. And is there, uh, what's the degree of, like, danger involved in well, they our liability as filmmakers? They have <laughs> You're not getting the surgery. You seem more concerned. Um... <laughs> No liability to you. Uh, it's That's just on camera, right? So if, yeah. if you die on his watch, it's not his fault. If I die, well, no one's Sorry, died. Someone has to be more. And no one has even close to died, right? Because they've been doing like like BCI like surgery for a while. It's it's a procedure, and they've done it before. And there's been very tiny side effects, like having a dead pixel, the equivalent of, you know, sometimes you see trails in your vision, and sometimes you get headaches. But really not anything more than that, but really minor ones. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens. <laughs> Ask Mike. To the other Mike. I'm uh, the other Mike, uh, Michael Atkins. And uh, so having it put in takes an hour. How long you, do you anticipate Kind of, is this going to be a permanent shift for you, or is this going to be something you're going to try out for two weeks? Or? Um, well, they said that if I don't like it, I can get it taken out. It's no big deal, and I don't get charged for that or anything. Um, but basically, right now, I'm online almost all the time, and I'm sharing everything. Like on Flickr, I have you know all these photos, and I'm always updating, and I'm always sending out data, and it's just reducing the time and space it takes to do that. And if it works and I learn to get into the system, it would just be like a more extendable version of a wearable computer that, you know, Steve Mann and Thad Starner and these people have been using for a long time. You know, the idea of being able to type while you walk and have the interface in your eyes instead of on glasses and just a little bit more 
Yeah, I mean, it's totally not crazy invasive, but just a little bit easier than having to sit down in front of a machine. You know, I could check in on Foursquare right now and you wouldn't notice. It's stuff like that, you know, so. Okay. Hi, I'm Don Park, and I'm an amateur filmmaker, and I know Amber DeSell, and she told me about this crazy medical procedure that uh, Amber Case was having done, and I thought, wow, I need to find out more about this. So it's an expensive procedure, and someone else, I understand, is funding it. Like, what do you know about the person funding it, and why do you think they picked you? Well, they knew my work online, and it seemed to line up with the ideals of their organization, you know, the idea of... Well, who else would they test it on? They would probably test it on a few people and then some cyborg anthropologist who studies human computer interaction <laughs> and participation architecture and, and digital architecture and like, you know, information architecture and everything. So once you were asked, how long did it uh, take for you to, to make a decision? Was it like, yes, or did you think about it? Well, or? well it's not really a uh, light decision, right? So um, I took a while, which is, and still deciding, right? The idea is that it's like, hmm, I should have other people around too, like that sort of thing. Like it's in a way, it's kind of a shared decision. Like you guys are here, kind of deciding with me to participate in this experience. Um, but none of us are. <laughs> no, but you're, you'll be there. Plan. You know, I'll, one of the other things I guess is that when I do something online, there's a bunch of people there with me, and so I'm doing something in real life now. So I want people to be there with me, but I can't have them online with me at the same time. So you're there in reality. We'll be following you around. And yeah. I have some experience with this. You know, we're going to be having cameras on you most of the time. Uh, do you know where this procedure is going to be taking place? Um, like, did the, the person mention a clinic or? Yeah, it should be um, around here. I think okay. at PSU Engineering Department. Okay, so if you need help uh, getting there or anything, uh, I can help you out with that. So. Cool. Hey, thanks. That's, That's very nice of you. Thank you. I'm uh, William Manson, and I also know Amber DeSell. And uh, my question for you is, um, you know, if you didn't have to worry about a uh, cap for uh, funding, what would your, you know, ideal uh, enhancements be? You know, hmm. what sort of things do you see down the line as well? I would like to have uh, cheetah feet made of carbon fiber. <laughs> When I broke my ankle, I asked them if they could just amputate my legs and put cheetah feet on them so I could break land speed records, and they really didn't take kindly to that because, first off, they didn't know what cheetah feet were. They didn't know that they were carbon fiber extensions for running really fast. They thought they were actual cheetah feet. <laughs> Gotta specify. I didn't specify anything. I, I, you know, everything was in shatters, and I was trying to change the subject. But um, the ideal thing, I mean, of course, everybody wants a jetpack, right? I don't Absolutely. want a jetpack, I just want to be able to fly everywhere. But if I can internally, with these little chips, fly all around the world and visit people and hang out with them and have their thoughts in my mind and they're really smart and everybody's really cool, that would be great. Um, so anyway, this is probably the, one of the coolest things I've heard of and it's kind of hard not to do it. Um, so yeah, other than that. Create a whole new uh, line of laws for uh, flying people I don't know. oh yeah well if you had fourth dimensional people they they could just show up in the middle of a bank fault and you know steal all the money and leave right so there's a lot of rules there I, I assume that there are tons of rules around this that will mm -hmm. you know because academians there's you know if you have all these people who are academics who get these in their brain and they don't care like they're just sharing cool thoughts but then you get like a bunch of other people and they're like sharing gross stuff you don't want to hear about it then there's blocking and spam mm -hmm. yeah, is and there marketing any, is there any testing for that in advance I mean is there any um, no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they're all like really, really academic sheltered people at large research organizations and that they're, pr they're probably going to be okay. There's not going to be a perv in there. There always is. Well, yeah. And then you just block them. Okay. You could just block you words. You can block people selectively. within. Yeah. I'm, okay. Well, I'm, I would, I'm going to, if, <laughs> if that comes to it, I think they probably assumed that. I think we have to, we got to introduce one more real oh, quick. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Randy, are you with us? Randy's going. Randy? Yes, I am. Hi. Right here. Hey, Randy. Yes. Would you introduce yourself, Randy? We've got Randy via Skype. From Boston. From Boston. And you're you're going to be doing some of the uh, documentary as well? Yes. I am in Boston tonight doing my open source evangelism thing, which I do for 
real life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be uh, handling a number of roles, I guess, camera and directing. My question for my question is, wh why are we doing all of this on film? I mean, you know, this you're going to be having this amazing experience with this sort of built-in chip with this augmented reality, and we're going to be filming you. Like, um, can I? Like record your brain? <laughs> can I, can you can plug I see in? what's going on inside? Can I capture that in some way? Yeah. I mean, why are why are we following you around and filming all this? That's a really good question. That is a fantastic question. Johnny Mnemonic and just get a little USB device <laughs> right there. Yeah, are you gonna be fitted for USB device? <laughs> I should ask that. That's Jeez. a really that's a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really. I you know. Well, we could try it. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should probably do something like that. <laughs> can, uh, can you ask the? Can I ask the the, can, the whoever? I I don't even remember like what's the guy's. Yeah, name so that? the person who contacted me. Uh, so I should probably oh. ask him about that. Right, or when you go to get the procedure, you who can is ask the person them. who? I I was contacted by someone about this. By someone about this. He prefers. Do not, you at least know? It's very important that he's not named because a number of people want this. Okay. And the fact that but I'm do you getting at it least for know? free is not very. Like you at least know you're not talking to like some. It's not like you're talking to some guy over the internet that you've never met. Oh no, before. no, okay. I met him. Right. No, I, in person. I just want to make sure that you know. Well, also, stranger I, danger, uh, Amber. Stranger that's, danger. See, that's why I recorded <laughs> the, the discussion on my iPhone and posted it to the internet. Okay. Which mostly people like listen to, right? Yeah. So people have heard what he sounds like, and he's you know. Yeah. So it's it's cool. Okay. Yeah. I think Mike had some more. Uh, I had another question for you. Oh yeah. And then yeah. We have to introduce All right. the mic. Yes. We will. Oh yes. There's um, another, the mic. other mic. We might have to pass the mic to the other mic. So I've used beta programs on my computer before, and they've <laughs> crashed, and that's just ruined my hard drive, or I don't know what happens <laughs> after that. But what if it's hooked up to your like consciousness? Are you at all afraid of what happens if it crashes? Yes. That's why, um, starting a few days ago, I got some help uh, from my friend Aaron, and we made a site called cyborganthropology.com, and I've been dumping my brain into that site for the past few days. So in case something happens, all of my knowledge will be in that site, and it will be able to be accessed. And by dumping your brain, you just mean like type, type, type? Type photos, okay, but dumping, photos but pictures, analysis, ways that I think so other people can copy you're them. You're not like, literally, like, but you're as not worried about your, like, you're not plugging your, stuff it's, in. It, it's not the knowledge, though, that right. would make me nervous. It'd be, like, the, you, what makes you you. It's your personality. Right. Yes. That would make me more nervous. Well, about all these other people are totally okay. Software. And I would only have it hooked up. The, the thing is, they're okay, and it should be pretty okay. okay. I, th right. I think it'll be okay. So let's, can we pass this mic um, here, over here behind the desk, because uh, we we had to have a, somebody had to run the equipment tonight. Um, Dr. Normal Mike is also uh, going to be taking part in this. And he's back there um, running the stream for us right now, but you want to introduce yourself and how you got involved in the project? Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got involved with the project because um, Amber and uh, I, early on, Amber produced the first Cyborg Camp. And Case. it was. Case. Yes, Amber Case <laughs> produced the first Cyborg Camp. And that was also the beginning of a, kind of our live streaming with Joe Christensen and Strange of Live and all that. And it was really exciting times. It was kind of the beginning of everything. And, um, and so. Uh, so I really wanted to get involved when I heard that you were filmmaking and, and doing all that. And uh, I'm curious, you know, you in the last couple of years. Like, tell us your yeah, name. I'm Doc Normal. I, I had I had the I lower know third. I think you on the stream, but we like to hear. At the Chiron. All right. Like, <laughs> Doc Normal. Um, I'm curious because, you know, in the last couple of years, with Cyborg Camp and Backspace and Cube Space and all these things, you know, there's all this community of tech people, you know, it's like Don and you and, you know, you all get together and you do like the hacker things. Do you think as more people are going to get this thing in your head that you're going to start finding your own community, like outside of us real wetware people here? Like, what do you think you're going to find? 
out well, there. Well, I think I hang out with everyone here online quite a bit already. Yeah. So I'm already mentally interfacing with all of you guys. And when we all show up in the same meat space place, it's really awesome, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I already online on Twitter, I'm dealing with like all these academic people and I have my own like other network that's kind of separate that I really like to hang out in, in which I say multisyllabic words that are kind of weird, um, even more than I do in, in, the, in the regular tech community. And I think it would just be a little bit more of, of that that I would probably not leave this community at all. I would just go there a little bit more and explore that and probably come back and talk about it a lot and write about it and get all excited. So I don't think I would I would leave, so to speak. So you're gonna be like sitting and talking to us and all of a sudden be like... Well, I can do that right now, right? <laughs> With my phone and answer an email, right? Well, what? yeah, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll probably... I was at a concert across the <laughs> <laughs> Cool. It's probably what will happen. Okay. Yeah. But um, I just want to be prepared next time I see you if you like right. suddenly glaze over. And right. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's true. I guess the other thing is that I've been reading all these papers on wearable computing, and that's basically mm -hmm. what happened. You know, Steve Mann said, "Well, you wear these sunglasses, and they're clear when you're hanging out with people, but mm -hmm. when you want to actually compute, the glasses turn dark." It's like a privacy shade. And then you, <laughs> then you know that somebody's computing because if somebody's looking at you like straight at you, uh -huh. and then suddenly they're like. And it just looked really weird because yeah. they're moving their eyes, and um, so there, there was that, you know. But in a way, there aren't that many papers about it, like invasive computing versus just, you know, attached okay. onto somebody. So not to be the vain one, but is it going to be visible? No, not at all. No. <laughs> okay. I kind of want it to be because I kind of want to look like a Borg. Yeah. But it, I probably. We can get you some like latex makeup or something. We could just on the tip of my nose. <laughs> oh, like a uh, like Rudolph or yeah. So, so it's all inside. It's yeah. Nothing it's, I think visible. it's like I don't know where it, they're gonna put it somewhere here. There. You should find that out before they do it. I'm going to. Okay. I, I just this is so early that I got I know, everyone involved new. that it's. In my colon. <laughs> <laughs> We have a peanut gallery. We always do. I have a question. Okay. And before that, I just want to mention there's one other director that's not here. Oh, and yes. Um, Liz Grover. Yeah, happy birthday. And it's birthday. her birthday. Yay, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Liz, in LA. Um, so, my question is how much research did you do before deciding? Well, you said you're still kind of in the process of deciding. But yeah. Um, how much research did you do? How much did you do you trust? The person, or I've been reading the papers about this sort of thing for a really long time, um, and basically the way in which this technology was described to me, it was a very stable form of it compared to all this other stuff. A lot of the other stuff has a lot of lags, and there's just it's not that it's like really bad for the brain. It's just that it lags a lot, and it's really slow. And if you have you know connectors on the outside of the brain, it's still really slow. You know, so this one has a really nice you know connection speed which would allow it to actually work. And you know, the interface design that actually makes sense instead of a really clunky, lame interface. Um, so, and I've been studying wearable computing obsessively for a really long time But wearable well. computing is nowhere near what you're doing. It is kind it's of, it's kind of, it's just kind of on oh, the edge. <laughs> where are you, I'm wearing this dress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing these boots. Right, but the thing is, I'm like, wearing these earrings. I mean, these earrings are the closest you can get because they go through my ear, right? right? I'm wearing those. <laughs> it's true. It's in your. It's in your brain. All right, it's in my brain. It's not. Well, wearing. it will be in my brain, but yeah. it's not. It's true. Okay. Thank well, you. that's why the documentary exists, so you guys can all talk me they out of it. They can be calm, I'll freak out. That's the way it's going to go. Yeah, you guys, I'll, I'll, I'll be the calm out. one. Well, oops, I probably smacked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can, and then, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Um, I'm just thinking about the person who's funding this, you know, and you said you've met him before and you know him, right? But someone, when someone puts up that much money for such an expensive and rare operation, right, there's got to be an ulterior motive. Like, or somebody else is benefiting from it. Like, have you thought at all about who stands to benefit from such an operation and, like, well, why they might fund it? There is a lot of very expensive research going on out there, and the first wearable computers were funded heavily by a number of large companies. And that's just how it gets done. It goes, 
Somebody has to test yeah. it before they can charge it, for it. Yeah, it's that. It, it, is the you person know, funding it? Like, is they part of a company that uh, develops this kind of technology, or are they just simply a benefactor with a lot of money? Uh, I guess I'll have to figure that out okay. a little bit more. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. All right, are we done? Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? So yeah, questions on the it chat. It starts soon. It oh. starts pretty soon. Okay. You'll see it not live, but pretty live, or somewhat live, or pretty close to live. So you'll try to catch up quickly as it goes? I mean... Yeah, we'll, uh, every week. Mm -hmm. Every week there'll Just be... Just kind of check in weekly? Yep. And there'll be a new something or other. I'm literally, like, wringing my hands over here. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. What if it makes you crazy? I mean, seriously, what if like all of a sudden you wake up? What do you hate? Is there something that you really like hate to eat? What if you like wake up and it somehow affected the part of your brain that tells you what you like to eat? Then I, I suddenly, mean, have you considered these things? Yes. Then I suddenly won't like tomatoes anymore. But I honestly don't think it's going to be hooked up to my entire brain. I'd, you know what? Your whole brain is connected to the whole rest of your brain, which is connected yeah, it needs to your whole like nervous an emergency system and your whole body. Like, button, you like know? you know, it's not like you it put something in your toe. It does need an emergency shut off button. Well, you could just have it so you have a mini EM pulse and go. Mm. I don't know. And then it just. <laughs> what? No one has had any problems in, in in these 200 people. It's it's been. Have you talked? That's a good question. Have you have you had a chance to talk to any of the people that have had the implant? No. I guess I should. That's something that maybe you should consider. But I will be able to talk to them once I have the uh, implant. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you have the implant. You'll be able to talk to them. Does, I think Doc has some questions from the chat. Yeah, there's a, a couple uh, questions here. Let me try to uh, bring those up. Uh, so from the chat, uh, several questions. Uh, Spinnerin wanted to know what context hey, is the research happening in? Is it a private company, an academic, or, or what's the context? I think it's a private company tied to academians, much like MIT is connected to private companies. And there are academians working to make devices better. Okay. And so both. It's both, yes. Uh, as a follow-up to that question, we've got a couple more good ones here. Uh, Spinner asks, how will it be powered? Ooh. I'm not sure. You need it to Audrey did. I'm not sure That's yet. Good. I was actually thinking that today about yeah. the power. Uh, not food. <laughs> It might be an extension of bioelectric. Yeah, I'll I'll ask and try to figure that out by next time. Probably have some answers. There's I think there's a website for it um, that maybe they might have more news about it. That's a good follow up because uh, Pedo in the chat room wanted to know if there was more online information about this technology. Yeah, uh, I think it's B-E-X-U-S, B-E-X-E-S, Bexis-Z-E-D.com. Bexis-Z-E-D.com. Z-E-D? Yeah. Okay. Like the letter Z? Yes, the letter Z. Yeah, Z. It's B E X U S. B E X E S Bexis Z. And um. Can you check that link to make sure it's the right one? Can you give to Silva sure. my she's Is it looking talky? Yeah. Right, I want to be, be talky. <laughs> um, there's a link where people can hear the conversation you had when yeah. you were offered the procedure. And could you say the link? Yeah, I'll just have. just go to okhazelnut.com. O A K H A Z E L. NUT.com and the first post on there is about this episode and also has the link to the, the You can listen to the conversation. energy. The, yeah. yeah, you can listen to me talking to the guy about the procedure. Is it the whole conversation or? It's just part of it. I, I hacked it together. Mm -hmm. I, I like to audio tape on my phone and when he started saying something really interesting I was like, well, okay, I'm just gonna, actually I just kind of started it on the way in and um, yeah. So Did he know how many minutes is it? How long? It's is like it? three minutes. Okay, three Did he minutes. know you were recording? I don't know if he knew I was recording. I okay. think it's okay. All right. I think it's I think it's totally okay. Else you guys wouldn't be here right now, and everybody would be you know 
nowhere. <laughs> I think it's a. Uh, I think it's it's good uh, PR for their company anyway. So as long the as they don't fry your brain, yeah. And if they do, then it's bad PR. Okay. So if I have this many people and a bunch of documentarians, they better do a really good job, <laughs> or else their entire company is doomed, right? From a PR perspective. I like that you give us that power. Thank you. Yeah, you have the power to destroy or create this company, based on how how this happens. Yeah. So I have a safety suggestion. So I have a safety suggestion. On the, on the television show, The West Wing, right, the, uh, the president had multiple sclerosis, and the vice president played chess with him every day as a measure of cognitive Ooh. capacity. So you're saying so we should play a you, game? You might want to, yeah, like have someone like Aaron oh, take like a baseline. Yeah, have, have some kind of cognitive task and use that as a baseline before the surgery and then repeat that as, uh, as the days go on. We should play the square root game where everybody comes up with an arbitrary square root and then you have to come up with an approximation of the square root as fast as you can. That's a good game. Okay. I fell down and hit my head once and we played the square root game for like three hours to make sure I didn't have any brain damage. So, right. okay. If the things go haywire, then we'll know. Because then you'll know, because the square root game. will degrade and degrade. Okay, cool, cool, all right. What if she that. starts cheating by using the... Yeah, well, what, wait, no, wait a second. No, wait a second. That's, that's, second. I should get really good at that. That would be a great <laughs> side effect. Yeah, instead of going down from the baseline, well, she takes off and all of a sudden can do like seven digit square roots. Perfect. Well, then, then that will be a good test. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. I can't wait. Partial differential equations in the head. <laughs> Randy, cool. do you have anything else? No, I don't have anything at all. It's late. <laughs> I want to go to bed. Bye. Randy, Thanks for Skyping Randy, in. you can go to bed. <laughs> okay, Sweet thank you very much. Thank you. I have, to get up, I have to get up in the morning and travel across Massachusetts and do the open source word. You've got to go open educate source. the masses. Right. Yeah, <laughs> bringing like. open source to the heathen of the east. <laughs> Bye, Randy. Bye, Randy. Bye, Night Randy. all. Do we have any other questions from the top? Does anyone else? I mean, did you get the website working? <sighs> no. Can I see that pen? <laughs> I love that you're coming in here. She's getting brain implants. And you've got a notepad. Z <laughs> oh, yeah. It's okay. I've got a giant notepad in my what? in my bag. I'm worried about getting Zuck like Zuckerman or what? Yeah, that's it's the new fuck. Oh, right. Uh, yes, with the, the Facebook-y thing. Yep, yeah. 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 No, I'm not worried. Not worried. I'm immune to Facebook. Turn your inner thoughts and make them public. No. All of a sudden, no. Slowly, just gonna decide I don't really, you know, all my thoughts are pretty just, you know, they're just about academic stuff. I wouldn't worry about not it. Not yeah. The thoughts that you don't realize you're having. Yeah, maybe about, like, unicorns or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Portland after yeah. all. And ponies. And unicorns. Ponies and unicorns. Well, that stuff is boring. Washing your hands or not. Oh, that's a difficult one. Yeah, obsessive compulsive thoughts about hand washing. Right. Nobody wants to hear about that. So here's the thing. What if, I mean, like, so we've, we've gotten past the whole, you don't think that there's going to be anyone crazy creepy or anything <clears throat> screen. What if there are, like, people that just do really, like, don't wash their hands after they go to the bathroom or don't wash their hands before they make food? Well, I don't or, have to be there. I mean, I don't like have Like, you can to... just shut out individuals? Is that... Yeah, but why would I care? I'm not the one touching their hands. They're all Because it would bug me. I don't they're know. They're across the world. They're their own people. Really? But yeah. then you have a... I think this is not going to be sharing, like, their hands. I think it's going to be sharing, like... Their thought. What they want to share. But what if they're thinking about their I don't think I don't think that they would broadcast that. That's like well maybe. So I would, you choose what you're broadcasting. Yeah, the okay. thing is like like Twitter, right? I could say, oh no, I forgot to wash my hands on Twitter every single day, right? <laughs> if I forgot to wash my hands, but I wouldn't. Why would I do that? I would run a script that said that for me, so that I wouldn't have to do it. You have control over that. But isn't I mean isn't that what this is? Is a script that's doing things for you? It's accessing what's going on. Ah, then you should have an interesting filter. Okay. So, the re redundant repetitive thoughts would automatically not be broadcast. I bet you could probably set that up. I bet this is like a system where you could figure that sort of thing out. Your brain would start misspelling it, or spelling it slightly. You could, yeah, you could just start spelling a different lazy thoughts. If you needed funding for any reason, too, you could go to Las Vegas and play 
blackjack. Oh, right. That was the poker. first wearable computer was actually made to cheat in a casino <laughs> before Steve Men. So when Not Steve Men was on the East Coast making his wearable computer to, to be anti, you know, about Seuss valence, which is the opposite of surveillance, um, on the West Coast at Stanford, they were coming up with wearable computers to make money off of poker and casinos. a limited source of funds. So yeah, could, it was interesting. Yeah. There's one about making money and, and cheating the system, and there's one about taking privacy into your own hands. And there's a lot of theory about that, which is fun, but probably boring to the general public. So I won't go into it. Oh, can I have the mic? So um, part of the reason all the filmmakers are here, other than the three of three of you have just met Amber today, um, Michael Clinton, Michael Atkins, and Will Manson are all meeting Amber for the first time. Um, so part of just all of us kind of getting to know what you're going to be doing, um, we also kind of wanted to start planning, you know, when you go to the clinic for the first time, and I'm hoping that a couple of you will volunteer to be at that that filming. I know Liz Grover said she's going to be able to be there. She's coming back from LA. Randy and I already talked about it. So, so okay, let me give the. So Randy and I talked about it, and we'll be there to film. Uh, going going into the surgery center or wherever it ends up being. Okay. So is the surgery is the surgery itself going to be filmed? No, no. that that can't be filmed. Um, okay. It's super confidential, and they don't want people to try and. I mean. Okay. I That's generally. Fair. I was just wondering. Yeah, I wanted them to film my ankle surgery, and they wouldn't do it. But. <laughs> well, they're not going to film your ankle. Surgery. I know. I know. They're, 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 yeah. It's it's. Um, yeah, they, they don't want to do it. So. Yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. Is there anything else? No, oh, that's good. Uh, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amber, thank you all for coming. <laughs> uh, really thank, thanks it. everyone for being awesome. And, all right. And uh, yeah. I.